Fighting the marine pollution problem feels overwhelming. More than 300 million tons of new plastic is produced annually, and less than 10% of that is recycled. If we don't change our habits, it is predicted that by 2050, marine plastic will outweigh all of the ocean's fish. We need to stop the problem where it starts. Governments enforcing new policies, brands taking responsibility, and consumers using the power of their wallets. Shannon Kenny is a sustainability coach, consultant, and educator at Mama Eco. She will help us start down the path towards a zero waste lifestyle. We're so excited to have Shannon Kenny with us, who is a sustainability consultant, coach, and educator with Mama Eco. Hi, Shannon, how are you? Hi, guys, I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. We're so excited to have you here for this interactive session that we've put together. Um, you're going to actually help coach some people through your methodology for how to start on the journey and the path to sustainable living, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So tell <laughs> us about yourself. How did you actually start on the journey? So, you know, I've had people ask me, was there like a specific sort of catalyst or was it like a, you know, a, a journey? And it's kind of just been like a, a series of events um, throughout life, I guess. So I grew up on the island of Trinidad, islands of Trinidad and Tobago, uh, which are the southernmost islands in the Caribbean. And, you know, my dad was pretty into environmentalism, but it was never really something that like he would say, this is what we have to do. This is how we're going to do things. He kind of just led by example. You know, one of the, the moments that really kind of stick out to me is there's, um, there's this beach in Tobago called No Man's Land. And it's kind of an ironic name because everybody wants to go on that beach. Everyone wants to enjoy that beach. Um, but no one wants to clean up after themselves. And so there would be these beach days where you'd have hundreds and hundreds of people on this beach and then at the end of the day everyone would just leave all their trash and so I would see my dad you know just he would always bring garbage bags with him and he would go and start picking up all the trash on the beach and you know my siblings and I we kind of just followed so we were like this is what we do like this is what you do when other people don't necessarily clean up after themselves or respect the environment um, as they should and so that was kind of one moment um, and then aside from that, when I moved to the States, I was able to uh, have the luxury of recycling because it was never something that we had in Trinidad. And even now, Trinidad is still starting to get recycling going, but it's, it's, it's nowhere near where it should be. And so I moved to the States and I was recycling for a few years and I was like, yeah, I'm like this eco person. Like I feel good about myself. I pat myself on the back. And, you know, a couple of years ago, well, not a couple of years ago, several years ago, uh, I was packing up the recycling for my apartment and at the time I lived with three other people and I bagged up these four bags of recycling and at first it was like great like not going in the trash and then I was like but this is still four bags of waste that we were all responsible for and it really kind of hit me that like it wasn't good enough to just keep doing what I was doing not change any of my behaviors and just Put that stuff away right just like go away i don't see it it's i recycle hopefully it goes there um to the right place and i started to really think about how can i solve this issue of my personal footprint at the source um and started to you know look at my buying habits look at my use of disposable items and it just slowly started to tweak things, you know, carry reusable items, try to avoid single use, try to bring my own bag, try to bring my own cup, you know, when I'm out and about. And slowly it just kind of, you know, trickled down into informing all of my decisions. Um, I learned about the concept of zero waste, which is a great tool um, with, you know, trying to avoid waste as much as possible, which connects with your overall footprint. And, um, Eventually, I decided that this was something that I, you know, I wanted to put all of my energy into. And so I started Mama Eco, which has had many different uh, evolutions, shall we say, um, from its first inception. Um, but now it's kind of turned into a service-based business where I, you know, educate people through my blog and my social media. But I also work with individuals one-on-one -on -one through coaching services, as well as working with businesses to help them work on their business footprint 
and facilitate their customers and clients to be able to live more eco-friendly by supporting those businesses. So instead of talking about, you know, how you actually coach people, we've actually asked some of our audience members to jump online right now. Um, and we've given them the challenge that they have to go and find three to five items in their, in their house right now. And you're going to actually coach them through their, the start of their sustainability journey. So let's bring those people on right now. It's a pleasure to introduce you to Shannon. Hey guys. How's it going? Um, Shannon is a sustainability consultant, coach, and educator. And she, we've been working with her today to learn about her company, Mama Eco. And she's so graciously offered to do a coaching session with some of our audience. So thank you so much for joining us. So I'm gonna hand it over to Shannon to uh, take us on this journey together. Hey guys, so um, if it's possible, if you could grab like a couple of items, maybe three to five items in your house that you're maybe having a little bit of struggle with, with figuring out a more uh, eco-friendly alternative to. So if you guys could run and maybe grab a couple of things right now, and then we could kind of talk about what uh, the more sustainable solutions are for you guys. Okay. All right, guys, so um, what's great about doing this in a group format is someone else may come with an item that you also have been wondering, you know, if there's an alternative for. So this is going to be really fun because we can kind of learn from listening to other people's conversations. So Lacey, let's start with you. Um, yep. Want to tell us what you, what you brought? Sure. Um, the first thing is toothpaste. Ah, okay, so... <laughs> Not so fun fact about toothpaste is the tubes pretty much never get recycled. So yes, it, it does come in plastic, um, but because it's hard to clean out the inside contents of it once the tube is empty, they generally don't uh, get recycled. So a great, there's a couple of different options actually. So one option would be you can get toothpaste that comes in a metal tube, um, which is fully recyclable. It does still come with a plastic cap, which creates its own issue. Another option would be to, and this is kind of fun if you like making your own stuff, you can make your own tooth powder, which is essentially toothpaste minus the paste. Um, and you can do that with three very simple ingredients, uh, cinnamon, baking soda, and bentonite clay. Uh, two of those you probably already have in your kitchen, so you might only have to source the, the bentonite clay. Um, but it literally takes you 30 seconds and it's, yummy and cinnamony and you don't have to buy anything really. Um, and then another option, which unfortunately, as it stands right now, and I think it's just, you know, an economies of scale kind of thing, is they have these like little toothpaste tablets that you can buy. Um, they can come in a, a glass container or you can get them at a bulk store if you have access to it. All right, so we're gonna move on to Rahab. And um, if you want to just hey. tell us, tell us what you got. Like the face masks. Okay. Yeah. The ones I throw away. Um, you'll probably find that a lot of those face masks, some sort of fabric blend, which means it's essentially made from plastic. I don't know 100% for sure but I'm gonna take a wild guess and say that that is the case. If they're made of 100% cotton, then you could compost them if you have access to that or a backyard compost, that kind of thing. Um, but my guess is they're probably made of, of some sort of polymer blend, which is plastic. Um, I mean, I would say the best option would be to find a cloth mask uh, for, that you can use over and over and you can continually wash. The benefit of that is when you have something that's reusable compared to something that's disposable, you only need one set of resources to create that initial product and then you continually wash it. So you're, never, you're not demanding new resources all the time. Uh, but when we have disposable products, it can be tricky because you, you always need to fill that void. So you're always getting new materials, there's transportation and getting that to you. There's packaging that come with the disposable items. So if you could find some sort of 100% cotton item that you can just reuse and wash then that could be a better option for you, especially knowing that 
we don't know how long this pandemic is going to go on for. So <laughs> it's also going to save you money in the long run too, right? Because you don't have to worry about getting supplies all the time. So, yeah. And, um, you know, before we move on to Will, do you have any thing that maybe you struggle with when it comes to being more eco-friendly in your personal life? I guess unplugging things because constantly mm -hmm. they're always plugged into our house and nobody ever takes them out even if nothing's charging yeah that's a tricky one because those things are running on energy you know even if uh even if we we're not using them so maybe it's you know setting a reminder for yourself on your phone something easy um maybe it's putting some signs up in your home so that other people know that you know this is not just something that's important to you, but that you would like them to participate in as well. So some sort of visual uh, you know, reminder would probably help with that. Let's move on to Will, who's got buried under all his waste. <laughs> <laughs> all right, what do you got? All right. So we got three avocados in here, classic bag. Mind you, I'm not home, but this is pretty much the exact same things I got at home. I got five loso, yeah, plastic container, water bottle, okay, trash bag. Okay, perfect. So we'll start with the avocados in the plastic bag. Um, so I know you said you're you're out of a friend's house, but. The truth of the matter is we don't necessarily need those bags. Like if we're at the grocery uh, and we're getting produce that's, you know, loose on the shelves, um, we can just put it right in the cart, right? Like the, the plastic bag, because at the end of it, we're still putting it in a bag with all of our groceries, ideally a reusable bag. Um, but another alternative for that would be to, you can get reusable bags. You can get them in cotton or these, there's, there's mesh bags that you can get. Um, the Fabuloso. So I, I have a bone to pick with that on, on two fronts. So yes, it does come in a plastic bottle, but I think the thing that concerns me more about that are the ingredients that are in that cleaner. Um, I know for me, uh, a lot of the mainstream cleaners can smell really toxic. And I'm, I'm almost 100% sure that that has some questionable ingredients in it. And as I had mentioned before, you know, if something is, is toxic, for us, the chances are it's probably not so great for the environment. Um, but you know, an alternative with that, which is also super economical, is just to make your own like all-purpose cleaner, which you can literally do with vinegar and water, or lemon and water, or even hydrogen peroxide and water. And those are all things that are really cheap. Uh, I would say even cheaper than than buying um, you know a pre-made cleaner. Fin finish the fabuloso and then you know <laughs> go for some diy action or um you know they are non-toxic you know eco-friendly versions um but you know there's so many underlying health issues these days and and i think we're gonna find well there already are studies but like it's it's a lot of what we're exposing ourselves to that seem clean and safe but right. are actually pretty good for us so yeah you've given us a great start so far and given us so many ideas about you know where we can start with our personal hygiene with our in our kitchens in our food purchasing um you know in the bathroom in different areas of our life so thank you so much for drawing attention to some of those like urgent areas i also really love how you you help us to see that it's not just the packaging but what's in it as well and that there's a lot of harmful products that don't just go on us but also go into the water systems and end up in the rivers and eventually in the ocean so thank you so much for drawing attention to like the bigger kind of you know indirect problems that come from our consumption habits yeah yeah yeah, there's so much under the surface outside of packaging, you know, with ingredients and, and carbon footprint of what it takes to get to get items to us, how much water goes into the making of, of all these products that we use. It's easy not to see that stuff because we don't, you know, we don't see it. So we don't know. Um, it's easy to kind of focus in on the waste, but there's just just ask questions, look at ingredients, you know, be be curious about the products that you're you're buying go onto their websites and see if they have any sort of, you know, sustainable practices and 
you know, just, just be curious about it. I think you'll open up a, a Pandora's box that's really interesting to, to sift through. And do you quickly just want to share some of the ways that people can follow Mama Eco and some of the, you know, great things they can find on your website? Sure. So my website is mamaeco.com. So that's M-A-M-A-E-C-O.com. I have a blog on there that has tons of resources on how to be more sustainable in your day-to-day -day life. I think, you know, these, these big environmental issues can be so big that we can feel like we don't have any control over them. And so the goal with the blog is to break down things into really easy, easy and actionable steps that we can all take, uh, depending on, you know, what we have access to. And then I also have on there a sustainable starter kit, which is the first of many of a series. And the first one focuses on the kitchen and it literally goes through all of the different areas um, or aspects of the kitchen where we can not only reduce our waste, but also reduce the, the carbon footprint and the, um, you know, potentially toxic chemicals that we're bringing into our kitchen and into our home. So it's a great sort of DIY um, option if you want to get started. And then of course, if anyone work, wants to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, you know, we can work together with my sustainable coaching services where we can take a deep dive into a specific area of your home or uh, your life, or, you know, we can, we can tackle it all. Um, but sometimes it's helpful to have someone who, can help you target things that are specific to you and your lifestyle rather than just like Googling, you know, doing a generic Google search and, and seeing what you can find. So there's a couple of different ways depending on how, how deep you want to go um, and what sort of approach you want to take. Awesome. Thank you everybody for joining us. Yeah, thanks a lot. Hope you guys learned a lot.